Hi, do you do your own car servicing but feel like you're missing some of the features that main dealers have for accessing diagnostics and service resets and SRS and ABS systems on your car? Well now there's a relatively cheap device that gives you some of those features without having to pay a fortune for the dealer diagnostic tools. It's this AP200C unit by Autel. It's a Bluetooth dongle that plugs into your OBD2 port on any modern car from about uh, 2000 or so onwards. Now in the past I've used these cheap ELM327 based dongles uh, to do uh, the OBD2 interrogation but they're very limited on the functionality and often they don't talk to all of the mo different modules inside the car. Uh, whereas this one does indeed have a lot more features um, Sells for a little bit more, so something around £100 or so. And these are the different versions of it, three different versions. The AP200C is the only one that gives you access to do an ABS auto bleed, which if you completely strip down or maybe change some of the modules inside your brake hydraulic system, then you need to do an ABS unit activation to do an auto bleed. This unit does indeed provide that feature. And as you can see here, it also allows you to access the diesel particulate filter regeneration, electronic part brake, the airbag system and uh, various other things like ABS as I say and throttle matching. Oh and also uh, battery condition monitoring systems when you change the battery. All of those things you don't get from a normal OBD2 dongle, cheap ones. Uh, it has a huge list of makes of car that it covers which you'll see if you look through the software. So I tried it on three cars of mine. Jaguar F-Pace modern car that has the uh, ABS auto bleed feature that actually comes for free for a year when you set up the device. Uh, it also talks to the Freelander system, it's 2003 Freelander, the BMW Mini systems. I found in the past for the Mini it was a bit of a pain because I had to buy a Mini specific OBD2 cable in order to uh, talk to it using a laptop whereas this dongle actually talks to it without any problem. On the Freelander it talks to the main ECU as well as the airbag and ABS systems and one interesting side benefit is it tells you the speed of each wheel so you could check whether your tyres are matched and whether it's stressing the VCU. So for a start let's see how well it works on the Mini. The dongle is plugged in under the right hand side of the dash, you see that light. Software installation is pretty straightforward so Max AP200 is the main one. As you connect to other cars like the Mini it automatically installs uh, other apps that the main one interfaces to. So you got one for BMWs, uh, this one I use for my Land Rover. So I'll just go into the main software. It'll automatically do a firmware update of, of your dongle as well. But the main uh, EOBD uh, functions for diagnosing um, error codes, giving you a description and so on is here. You've got all these different protocols, five different protocols, but it will automatically detect which protocol your car is using, if you're not sure what it should be. You have to have the ignition on the car on, of course. Sometimes I found with the Mini, uh, you get better communication with the engine running, but for the moment, we'll do it just with the ignition on. With the Mini, it saves a little bit of time if you pick the protocol directly. So I believe it is the first one anyhow. Yep, so we've got zero codes. Let's just read them anyhow. But I recently cleared it out, so nothing to report there. One quite useful function is you can look at live data and let's actually run the car to do this. But we'll see that we can map measurements in, in real time. So you can see all the measurements you can do, ignition timing, various intake temperatures, oxygen sensor status and so on. All right, let's for instance have a look at ignition timing. What we can do is get a real value read out or we can graph it and you can see in real time getting graph data obviously varying with the revs and we can also get a dial just a small delay between the read and the display. Oh, it could be quite handy if you want to look at uh, boost pressures or something. Now let's look into some of the service functions. If you want other things like um, oil service reset, electronic parking brake control and so on, those are extra bolt-on features as you can see in this table. Not unreasonable compared to the saving over taking it to a dealer. Let's see what features we've got for ABS on this car. So you can see here a huge list of makes of vehicle. So you basically install additional bits of software. You can see the software sizes here. 
like so. We're going to go on to Mini. Automatic selection requires a VIN number to do a lookup of what features your car has got. Uh, fortunately, software will automatically read the VIN. Vehicle identification number. And then just say OK. Identifies the vehicle. Yes. So this is the sort of thing that your cheap OBD2 dongle won't do. They generally don't talk to additional modules like the APS. So that is an advantage. So hot functions. On this car, we've got the additional feature of DSC brake bleeding routine. System must be pre-bled before starting the brake bleeding, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not actually gonna do a brake bleed, but let's pretend I had, and let's just see what features it gives you. So this procedure should be done after the DSC unit has been replaced or uh, the master cylinder has been done. So I, in other words, you've got air in the system. Following prerequisites must be done. Sequence of brake bleeding is the rear right, the rear left, front right, front left, and so on. Takes 120 seconds. Continue. So it's now communicating to the car. And you can hear it's activating the ABS module to clear any air out of the system. Hopefully you, uh, you heard that noise. And this is the same on the Jag as well. Got a few lights that are popping up on the dash. There's the ABS unit going again. See there it's telling you that it's activating the ABS because the ABS lights are flashing. And there's more pumping noises from the ABS unit. That procedure is basically clearing air out of the ABS module and shows that it's working. And here you've got additional instructions to go through bleeding the rest of the system, which uh, I'm not going to do now. And for the SRS airbag system, it's got these modules inside the Mini. You can check for any errors. No errors, fortunately. So depending on your car will depend on how many modules that you have and so on and whether you've got any problems. So this mail option at the bottom tells you all of the modules that you can buy and, and how much money and so on. So the electronic parking brake, battery management system, diesel particulate filter, steering and throttle calibration as well as uh, oil service resets. So let's go over to uh, my Freelander car, which does have some OBD2 errors from when various systems were disconnected. To show you how it reports those errors. The Freelander OBD2 port is over here. Bit easier to get to. So I'm looking at the diagnostics. We have quite a few error codes, eight. And read those off. And here are the error codes. Uh, so I know my oil temperature sensor is disconnected, but let's just see the descriptions that uh, are in these. Quite useful, it's connected to the internet, maybe part of the app as well. And it's telling you what the likely uh, faults are, where they've got open and shorts on various things. Faulty sensor, so it's a little bit more than you get on your cheap OBD2 readers, where you've got to go on the internet and look up the code yourself. And clearing the error codes is just a matter of tapping on that feature at the bottom, uh, which does work. And again, with the engine running, you've got all this live data, that you can map out or put on gauges or just look at the numbers on. And although there's no auto bleed for your brake system on the Freelander, you can still access the ABS module, as you can see here, and you can read off all the CAN bus errors and things. So that's just a quick look at this rather useful dongle and software. Covers a lot of cars, a lot of different protocols. No need to buy any more different cables for your OBD2 port and has service functions and diagnostic. So for me, yeah, pretty useful uh, and it works pretty well. Okay, thanks for watching. Good luck with your car fixes. Bye.